Ooh, ooh, spicy headline, finishing out the year strong. I don't know where this is going, but we're gonna go there, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out some things together. Are you ready? Um, I'm ready. Let's get weird. The following is a Goulash Media production. GoulashMedia.net. Remember a simpler time when it was okay to be weird. Have fun and think for yourself. Well, those days are over. The art of conversation itself is dead. Sacrificed on the altar of divide and conquer and disguised as political correctness and spared feelings. I believe that unity can only come from truth and that the only way to find truth is by exploring and embracing our valuable differences and having civil, open-minded, and uncomfortable discourse. Conspiracies, politics, religion, and all the taboo topics are mainly just praise you don't bring up around the Thanksgiving dinner table. We are here to literally change the world one uncomfortable conversation at a time. So if you're easily offended, put your big girl panties on and buckle up, buttercup, because you chose to be here. I'm Dan Smuts, you are the power, and this is The System Is Down. Well, 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 well. Finishing out a year. Finishing out another year together on The System Is Down, the least comfortable show on the web. That is where you are. That is where you have landed. It is the place where we talk about all the uncomfortable topics, the taboo things like conspiracies, politics, and religion, as though there's any difference in the three these days. Uh, This is The System Is Down. If you're new here, go find the person who invited you. Give him a big, big, big slap on the rear, kiss on the mouth, hashtag me too, from me and you, because I appreciate you being here, and because you're going to enjoy it, and you're going to enjoy it, because we're going to get, we're going to get a little saucy today, we're going to get a little spicy, you read the headline, you know what it is, uh, I, I can't repeat it to you now, because I don't remember what I'm going to headline it, but it's going to be, it's going to be spicy, <laughs> um, yeah, guys, we're, we're finishing out 2020, the year of our Lord. God bless it. Uh, wrap it up, put a bow on it, put a big boot up its ass, and uh, let's send it off the way it deserves by talking about some fun stuff. And like I said at the beginning, I don't really know exactly where this is going to go. I don't know exactly what this is going to be. I've never never recorded this episode before, um, but I've got some thoughts. So before we get into those thoughts... Before we get into them, I got to remind you guys about our sponsors. First one being, of course, uh, these guys, Brave Botanicals, free ounce of Kratom. You want Kratom? You love Kratom. You never tried Kratom, most likely. You want to try it. You've heard about it. You've heard me talk about it. Now's your chance. Go try your free ounce of Kratom at freeounceofkratom.com. Enter the promo code TSID for to let them know that we sent you. You just got to pay for it, like five bucks shipping or whatever, but uh, it's it's free outside of the Kratom itself is free. The shipping, I mean, you're getting your drugs. You still got to pay your, you know, mail person. It's got to get here, okay? Uh, so freeouncekratom.com, check that out. They've also got uh, CBD, colloidal silver, and all sorts of fun natural products. You can get 5% off any of them if you use the promo so- the same promo code TSID at freeouncekratom.com. Check them out right now. Um, we've got also... Where are they at? Where are they at? Here they are. End the two-party system. Go to endthetwopartysystem.org. Check out what they're all about. They are all for just that. Just ending the two-party system. And the two-party system is, as we're going to talk about quite a bit today, it's it's dead. <laughs> it's dead. Uh, if you still believe that that is the, the most valuable way for us to conduct business as a country... Um, then you are voting for the death of our country. If you want to know more about them, they're not just strictly libertarian. I know that could be an assumption made, but no, they are just for ending the two-party system, opening up our options, uh, getting ranked choice voting in there, and all that sort of type of thing. And the two-party system.org is where you can find out more information about them and everything that they got going on. So check them out at and the two-party system.org. We've also got you guys, you beautiful folks of the Downers Club, patreon.com forward slash the system is down. If you like the show, if you want to support it, and if you want to get even more of it, uh, bonus episodes every single week, every single week during the, even during the holidays, even when I'm out on tour with Spike Cohen, even when I'm, you know, gallivanting around doing whatever, I still, uh, I think all but maybe one week in like 
however many years you've been doing this, four years? I don't know. Uh, in however many years, I think there's only been one week that I've missed. But uh, bonus content in the Downers Club every single week. So if you like what you hear, you want to hear more, you want to help the show keep getting bigger and better, more beautiful every single week, go join at patreon.com forward slash the system is down. And if you're listening to this before the turn of the year, um, Dead Simon stuff. Uh, and even if after, but, uh, you can get these fun little doodles, these fun little drawings, these things that I create myself. Let me show you. I've got them right here. These, I'm sending these out as Christmas gifts, late Christmas gifts to all of you. Um, I do these nice little weird, disturbing sketches, doodles, and I package them up for you and mail them. I, I do them all by hand. These are not duplicates. These are not recreations or copies. Uh, you will be getting a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork that I drew for you by uh, j just me, just all all out of my weird brain. Um, that is what you'll get if you sign up at any level in the Downers Club before the turn of the year, our Lord's year, 2020. Um, before January 1st, if you sign up, you're going to get one of those. Even if you sign up for as little as a dollar, I will send you one. And those puppies, I, I generally charge like $35, $40 for. So pretty pretty substantial incentive. Come on in. Check it out. You'll get your basically free thing. And then if you if you uh, check it out and hate what you find, then you've lost only a dollar and gained oh so much more. So check that out. Uh, let me pull that back up here. Let's see. Uh, there's that. Oh, also these mugs and shirts and all sorts of other perks are available in the Downers Club. Uh, more weird, more raw, more offensive, more weekly content at patreon.com forward slash the system is down. Join the Downers Club today and get all that shit. Again, that's patreon.com forward slash the system is down. Check it out. We've got all sorts of fun stuff in there. There's that. That's all. That's all. That's all the plugs. So what are we talking about today? I, I am alone today. I am alone rambling. And I'm guessing that some of you are assuming, based on the title, saying the title's going to say something to the effect of, you know, it's it's racist to vote for, to have voted for Joe Biden. And I'll, I'm sure many of you will jump to the assumption, obviously, that that means I must be a Trump supporter. Yeah, no, I'm not. I did not vote for, J for Donald J. Trump. I did not vote for Joseph Biden. Spoiler alert, I also did not vote for 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 this lady right here. Didn't didn't even vote for her, but that's a story for another day. Didn't vote for Joe Jorgensen even. That's uh that's the level of dedication that I have to this uh this point that I'm trying to make. I am not here to say that uh, Joe Biden is a racist, even necessarily. I'm here to discuss some things of J about Joe Biden, and uh, that trouble me. Okay, so where did this all start? Why did I feel the need to talk about this now? Obviously, it doesn't even matter now, right? It doesn't matter because Joe Biden is either in or he's not in, and whether or not that we're not here to talk about voter fraud or anything like that either. We're here to talk about something completely else. Okay, so Joe Biden is probably going to be the president. Whether that is valid or not does not matter to me at this moment in time. It matters to me to some degree, but that has nothing to do with this. Um, so over the Christmas uh, excursions and meeting up with some people, some friends, some fine folks, um, a friend of mine, okay, I, I got called a, a white supremacist uh, on Christmas break. That happened. I think I think it was a joke, but the person who said it is a Joe Biden type of supporter. I can't definitively say that he voted for Joe Biden, but I can say almost definitively, yes, he voted for. That's, that's the type that I'm talking about here. Um, like, would have never voted for Donald Trump in a million years. I'm sure it didn't even, it didn't even occur to him uh to consider voting anything other than Joe Biden in this election process. Um, I'm not going to like speak ill of this person. This is a very good friend of mine, and I love him dearly. Um, but I know that he does have a little bit more left-leaning of a, of a mind frame at this point in time. That's fine. That's fine. But you have to understand all the contexts, all the things. So, this, why did I get called a white supremacist? Jokingly. Possibly, mind you. Um, I, I think it was a joke. I think it was a joke with, like, undertones of 
it's funny because it's because I think that there's a little bit of truth to it. Now, my res how this happened was somebody else actually made a racist joke. Somebody who's better friends with this person probably than I am made a racist joke. Um, and we laughed. We laughed because, or actually, it, we didn't really laugh because it wasn't that funny. But it was a very overtly racist joke. And I don't think that person is uh, a racist necessarily either. But they were just making a joke. Um, this, the, the person who called me, that, we'll call him per subject A, and the uh, person who told that joke, subject or person B. So person A kind of chuckled at that joke, and we were kind of like awkwardly like <laughs> that wasn't you know if you're gonna tell a racist joke at least make it funny. I'm not I'm not saying that I was like offended or assumed that this person was a racist because of the joke. I'm saying that if you're going to go there, at least have it pay off. At least convince us that it is for sure a joke. <laughs> like and so that conversation went on a little bit and. Person A made a remark that was like, said something like, uh, people don't believe that other people are lesser or something to that effect. And I said, well, some people do. And then, it, well, that was it. That was it. Then he said, oh, you're just a white supremacist in broad daylight now. So, whoa. <sighs> Pump the brakes, bud. Pump the brakes. We didn't get into it that much because we had to go off and do something else. And it was kind of just in passing. But... And it didn't even occur to me, like, it, I wasn't taken that aback. It, it, I had a little something inside of me that was like, wait, is he, is he serious? Because he's a person that, if he said that, based on some of his political leanings and some of the, you know, some of the uh, ideas that he kind of espouses, I was like, do you really mean that? And it didn't even occur to me to stop and reset and say, are you serious? Because I was thrown off and laughing like uncomfortably because I thought it was a joke at first. And then we walked away. But it, it occurred to me later on, like, he might have, I think he might have meant that. And what I said was, some people do think that way. I was not saying, I, the joke, even in my mind, wasn't me saying, some people do and I'm one of them. It was, if anything, more saying, some people do and the person who just told that joke, person B, would be would be one of them if he believes that thing that he's saying. Again, not saying that they did. I'm sorry if this is confusing. We'll get to some more poignant points here in a moment. But um, this all plays into it. So person A called me that. And then some, somebody else later on said, uh, well, one thing we learned this year at Christmas, I know, is uh, obviously Dan's a racist. And he was definitely joking. And he was saying how ridiculous it was for him to have said that anyway. Um. And I was like, okay, so this that stood out to you too, that that's not just, that's not just a haha -ha joke. Um, and I got to thinking, I, I said at the time, it didn't come out very poignantly. I, I may have had a little bit of the devil's lettuce and I was just having a good time relaxing and hanging out with friends. It didn't, like, I couldn't form the thought fully at the time, but I did say something to the effect of, well, you know, I, I think it's like, I think it's, what was it? I'm more concerned about killing brown people in other countries than I am about jokes. And he said, well, they're not mutually exclusive. And I said, no, and I'm not, and I am mutually inclusive, in, like, in my joking. Like, again, not the, the best way to say it. The more I, I've, I processed it, though, like, the way, the thing, the, the problems, like, what I'm trying to say is, I know that you voted for Joe Biden, okay? And I can understand how you could come to that conclusion. I can. But I'm to the point where I think that if you vote for Joe Biden while calling other people racist for jokes, then you are at best ignorant. And I'll explain more, obviously. We're, we're just getting started here. Now, I'm not saying Joe Biden is more or less racist than Donald Trump. I'm not saying because of the things that we're going to talk about, uh, because of all these problems with Joe Biden, that you should have voted for Donald Trump, or even or even Joe Jorgen necessarily. Um, I mean, Joe Jorgensen, obviously, there's not much to say about like her 
voting history or anything like that, her track record, because she doesn't she doesn't really have one. Um, which whatever. Not really talking about Joe Jorgensen. She's not a part of this conversation. Uh, she's, not, she's not a part of most conversations, sadly. Or not sadly. I don't know. But, so, okay. So you're saying that I'm a racist because I made a joke. Or let's say I did make a joke that was, which I didn't this time, but I would have. And I, I would be fine with doing so if it was a good joke uh, because I'm not. I, I'm not a racist, okay? I, I shouldn't have to say that. And um, members of the Downers Club will hear more rants on this, but moving into 2021, I want to get to the point where um, we're, we're acting, in on this show, we're acting confidently and boldly for truth and not apologizing or saying, that's a joke, people, every time we make a, an off-color joke. Because I, I like to assume that people who listen to the show are smart enough to know the difference between a joke and racism. And the fact that I have, you know, I don't know, supported, I even supported Black Lives Matter, ranted about all that stuff back in the day, uh, on the, the merit of the ideas in the beginning, be, before, you know, all, all the stuff with the, with the organization of BLM came out. I support the ideas of um, cops suck. <laughs> like we should all be able to agree on that like the lockdowns i don't understand why uh blm people aren't supporting like they're saying all oh, it's just white people that are trying to get their their businesses open uh it's just these white racists it's like we should all be joining together because we all can agree once again at, like what happened right after george floyd everybody agreed well those cops are bastards yes and um then all all that stuff happened with the I don't know, rioting and looting, um, and th and that turned some of the right away from supporting the uh, the defenders of George Floyd. And um, now, where am I going with this? Um, <laughs> yeah, now we've got the this other thing that is a problem with cops, and we we're still like fighting over like this is a, a political debate. We we should be defending uh, anybody who is wrongfully treated you know in any way by the cops <laughs> we can all agree that the cops suck at this point I, I would imagine uh the the vast majority of people in the year of 2020 alone should have enough of a reason to think cops generally suck and we don't look to cops for protection nearly as much as we look to make sure the cops aren't looking while we drive you know without a seatbelt or something like that um so yeah Voting for Joe Biden and voting for Donald Trump at this point is voting for endless war, okay? Like, if that is not, that's the point I'm, I was trying to make poorly, obviously, and I'm going to still try to make it poorly. Voting for people who keep us in endless war with people of not, you know, I don't know. Euro descendant heritage, which every every politi every not every politician, every president is done now. Like that's how is that not more racist than jokes? And I know it doesn't have to be one or the other, but if we're going to be angry about something, you've got people that will go out on Twitter and call people all sorts of inflammatory, like make claims. But I've had people attack me online saying that I am. Uh, because of the jokes that I've made, I am this or that, and yada yada. But those people don't seem to care about the fact that Joe Biden voted for the Iraq War. That Joe Biden, uh, and you know his his track record with Barack Obama, he is uh, he wasn't the president obviously, but he supported everything Barack Obama did. And so you know, I know that Barack Obama was a beautiful black man who talked very suavely, but when he you know, like drone strike. Uh, funerals and shit, when you drone strike weddings, when you, um, I don't know, when you just you put us in war after war, what was it, seven wars that Obama had us in? I mean, they weren't all official because they didn't have war at the beginning or end of them. They were just, you know, military sieges in other countries where we were bombing brown people 
for God knows why, and not even really, you know, discussing it with the people, spending tax dollars on killing, uh, from our perspective, minorities. I mean, obviously, they're not minorities there, so they're not minorities, but killing people of different heritages. Um, if you, Okay, all, all that matters. It doesn't matter why we were there. Really, it doesn't. What matters is, were they what were they protecting us from in these cases? Look into it. Have you ever heard of the threat in Yemen? And this this goes to you, Donald Trump. Uh, have you ever heard of the big threat that we have coming in Yemen? Or like, have you seen on the news where they're saying the Yemeni people are planning to bomb us? No. Then why are we there? I mean, we we talked. Uh, and I'm not going to pretend like I'm, you know, Scott Horton or anybody uh, like geniuses on foreign affairs and war and stuff like that. All that matters is. If we aren't threatened by a person, then why are we sending our dollars and sending our troops and sending our efforts to go blow up people? Like, if Joe Biden, if Joe Biden bombed, um, let's say Texas, no, not Texas, let's go more benign. Let's say Joe Biden bombs um, Idaho or anywhere in America and kills 20 people, would we be outraged? I think so. I'm pretty sure everyone could get together, unite, and agree. Hey, you should not be bombing, like, trying to hit, uh, terror. like, let's say there's a terrorist in um, Boise, Idaho, and he's bombing to get that terrorist out of there and causes 20 casualties in the process. Innocent bystanders. Would that be bad? Yeah. What if they were black people? in Boise, Idaho, which probably isn't, I don't know if you could find 20, uh, black people in Boise, Idaho. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even think I've ever been. So whatever. Um, if he bombed 20, if he killed 20 black people in Boise, Idaho, mass outrage about racism, right? It's obviously racially driven. And he, I might even agree with you based on, you know, the circumstances. But if there were, happened to be 20 black casualties trying to stop a terrorist, I would say that that is bad. Now, would you say it's bad if it happens in a different country? And if you wouldn't, is that racist? Is it racist because... <sighs> Why does it only matter here? Like, for people who pretend to care so much about social justice, why do we only care about social just justice for the most wealthy people in the world, ourselves? We don't care about social justice that ourselves, as a collective, are, you know, destroying in other countries. Like, you know, I, it's just... Bombing brown people. This is like our, our favorite pastime. The best thing that Trump did was not get us into too many more wars. And as I've said before, uh, um, Rand Paul said, came out <laughs> saying something to the effect of, uh, what was it? A hey, vote for libertarians, vote for Trump because he's going to get us out of these wars. It's like you had four years, man. Same for o Obama. It's like all these people, all Every single one of them keeps saying, we're going to get you out of this war. We're going to get you out of this war. How long ago since we got into Afghanistan? We're still putzing along for God knows why. And all that was based on nonsense. All of Iraq was based on nonsense. And Joe Biden voted for the war in Iraq. Not only did Joe Biden vote for the war in Iraq, Joe Biden... Let me see. Let me see. We've got a couple things to pull up. Joe Biden's year, no, not that one yet, hold on, not that one yet, hold on, you can see there's some, there's a few things that we're going to go over here, um, and there, there is a lot of things outside of the war, like the 94 crime bill, like opposing busing, like saying uh, you didn't want his kids growing up in a racial jungle, you know, like saying you're not black if you don't vote for me, which is the most condescending thing I've ever heard, um, it, pretty racist too, but uh, we're... We're going to start, we're going to talk about some of that, but all that really direct, like, blatant kind of racism stuff, <laughs> all that doesn't even matter that as much in this conversation. Like, I want to talk about war, man. 
Why do we not care? Who who out there cares about war? Anybody at all anymore? Is it because you would think with things like Facebook and like social media and stuff like that, that we would have more of a concern or more of a care for people across the world uh, because we're able to see them more directly and we're able to see the mass atrocities that are being carried out in our own names you know, with our dollars that are being taken from us unlawfully. <laughs> um you would think that we would care more about that in today's day and age, but it, it, it happened the opposite, where we got so connected to everyone around the world that we care mostly about ourselves because ourselves put out the most content of all. We are the entertainment culture. We are fat. We are happy. We've got our bread. We've got our circuses. Please give us the vaccine and let us drift off to sleep uh, so we be not afraid. Um, yeah. How, how is it possible that... Um, Nobody cares. The right doesn't care about war. Maybe Rand Paul does deep down, but don't lie about it. I, I mean, John, Donald Trump was there four years. It's the one thing, the one thing that he can control uh, directly. He's the commander in chief. If he says, we're coming home, guess what? We're coming home. And he said, we're coming home. But then he didn't actually do it. <laughs> oh, so the point, like, the main point, in my, in my opinion, is if you don't care about war, if you don't care about Biden pushing for the Iraq war, which I, I mean, there's some confusion. I, I have some confusion as to whether, uh, and I think he does too, as to whether or not uh, Joe Biden's son died in the Iraq war. Uh, if he did, then Joe Biden is directly responsible for the death of his own son. That sucks, doesn't it? Uh, maybe that's why he's completely about-faced and said that he didn't support the Iraq war now. But he's about-faced on several things that he said, because um, Joe Biden is a liar. Also, Donald Trump is a liar. I'm going to keep uh, throwing that in there. This is mostly about Biden and Harris, but uh, I'm not saying that Trump's any better. The main point of all this is to sh to tell you the system is fucked up. You thought I was going somewhere else with that, didn't you? No, um, the, we have a system where we've been convinced, we've been confused, we've been kept so oblivious to what's going on in the world, to what's going on in other countries, to what we're doing in other countries. We've been kept so distracted and so confused, distracted by all the entertainment and all the, the, the nonsense and noise, distracted by all the media and them not reporting on what's happening in other countries and also them making it as confusing as possible uh, as to why we are in these these conflicts in the first place to make sure that people don't start asking questions because you know what war makes a fuck ton of money all right uh let's read a little bit let's read together i'm gonna need some beverages drinking my frappe drinking drinking my my frappe uh from the old mickey d's uh yay capitalism God, God bless America. Anyway, <laughs> let's uh, switch over screen share here. This comes from CNN Politics, and some of these are old, old stories. This one is January 6th of 2020, so it's a year old. Some of these are even older because we're talking about things that go way back here. And yes, it is possible for these people to change their minds, to change their opinions on things. That doesn't change the fact that you are directly responsible for killing a bunch of brown folk. But somehow... We're going to see them through all of this, after everything that we go through tonight, or today, or whenever you're listening to this. We're going to get to the point where they change their minds so much that they're supporting the exact opposite, because it's more socially good now. It's more socially acceptable now. Um, fact, this comes from CNN Politics, like I said, so you know it's legit. Fact check. Biden, again, dishonestly suggests he opposed the Iraq war from the beginning, and this is CNN we're talking about here. This is a year ago before he was, you know, all official <laughs> and stuff. Um, now they're off, you know, polishing his knob. But uh, at, at one point, they were a little bit critical of the man. And I believe the next step, now that they can't be critical of the man, is going to be CNN dissolves. Because <laughs> what are they even going to talk about once Trump's gone? Um, Washington, CNN, Democratic, uh, presidential candidate Joe Biden dishonest, dishonestly suggests on Saturday that he had opposed the Iraq war from the very moment it began in 2003, even though Biden's campaign said in September that he misspoke. 
when he uh, when he made a similar claim. Biden was responding Saturday to a voter in Des Moines, Iowa. Hey, that's pretty close to home. Don't come looking for me. Uh, who told him, "If you, uh, I'm with you 90% of the way," but uh, quite, but questioned his judgment in part because, quote, "You were for the second Gulf War, which was a mess." Biden said, "Quote from the very moment President George W. Bush took or launched his." Shock and awe, military man. That's that's how you know that this was a shit show of a of a quote here. You've got five different interruptions to tell us what Joe Biden was trying to say. Um, there's not a complete full sentence here from Joe Biden. So Biden said that from the very moment President George W. Bush launched his shock and awe military campaign, right after that occurred, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I opposed what he was doing and spoke to him. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. It's false that Biden opposed the war from the moment Bush started started it in March 2003. Biden repeatedly spoke in favor of the war, both before and after it began. Biden's language on Saturday, saying he opposed uh, what he he opposed what he was doing at the moment the war commenced, was more vague than his language in September when he flatly said he had opposed the war uh, at the moment or at that moment. Uh, but the newly but the new version was highly misleading even under the most uh, generous interpretation on both occasions and on another occasion earlier this week Biden created the impression that he had been against the war at a key moment when he was actually a vocal supporter surprise surprise when Biden had when Biden has been asked in recent months about his past position on the war his responses have been very similar. He said Saturday, uh, as he did at a Democratic debate in July in an NPR interview in September, and to the New Hampshire editorial board on Monday, that he only voted in 2002 to authorize Bush's, Bush to use force against Iraq because Bush had privately promised him that he was only trying to get weapons inspectors into the country. Oh, so lies. So he voted for lies and war. Good job. That makes it better. I only did it because I wanted to lie. In July, Biden continued, From the moment shock and awe started, from that moment I was opposed to the effort and was outspoken as much as anyone at all in the Congress and the administration. Yeah, whatever. Biden's September rendition to NPR was the most direct. Bef before you know it, we had sh what the hell? Why is he like? You can tell it's all scripted because his response is the same every time, except for when it becomes the exact opposite. Um, how Biden's team has explained Biden supported the war. Hey, there we go. That's what we're looking for. As CNN's KFILE team explained, K file in detail, Biden did not oppose the war from the beginning. He repeatedly expressed support for the war as a Delaware senator, though he did. Uh, wait, though he did, as the campaign said, criticize Bush for how he handled the diplomacy, the conduct of the war, and the pre-war intelligence. Biden did call his 2002 vote a mistake beginning in 2005, but he endorsed the envision right before and after it occurred, did so again in public remarks later in 2003, and continued to argue in 2004 that the U.S. should keep up the fight in Iraq. Do we need more evidence? Do we need more evidence that this man is a liar? Do we need more evidence that he says that he did not support the war, and he also says that he did support the war? So whatever's convenient. And again, this comes from CNN. So you know, something. Uh, Biden's hawkish record. This comes from HuffPost. Even more lefty-leaning news reporters just trying to keep it fair and balanced. This comes all the way from back in 2009. 2009, when Joe Biden was doing what? Oh, he was being uh, a career politician who supported war, probably. That's just my guess. When Barack Obama picked Joe Biden as his running mate, he drew sharp criticism from his anti-war base because of Biden's support for the U.S. invasion of Iraq. His flagrantly false claims about the uh, alleged Iraqi threat and the abuse of his positions, uh, his position as chair of the Senate Foreign Re Relations Committee to suppress anti-war testimony before Congress prior to the invasion. A look at the senator's 35-year record on Capitol Hill indicates that Iraq was not was not 
an isolated case and that Biden has frequently al allied with more hawkish Democrats and Republicans. This was cons considered particularly significant since Obama and other leading Democrats have acknowledged that the choice of Biden was largely because of his foreign policy leadership. Thus far, however, it appears that Biden has largely played the role of a, a loyal vice president, which is actually uh, consistent with his history of not making waves against the prevailing viewpoint. His history of not making waves against the prevailing viewpoint. Do you know what that means? Being a weak-ass bitch. <laughs> Being a puppet. Doing what he thinks uh, is going to further his career as a politician. And look. Look what happened. It worked out. It worked out because he, uh, you know... I mean, take the 94 crime bill. We can get into that more if, you, if you'd like. Write me and let me know if you want me to do that. And uh, I'll read it much too late. But um, the 94 crime bill, um, you know, he... He has completely about faced on because they they've tried to explain away his tough on crime uh, ness as being not racist uh, because it wasn't just it wasn't tough on racial focused crime it was just tough on crime in general it was focused on the drug war and it was focused on being as tough as possible giving maximum sentencing for all all sorts of offenses but I mean that always comes down to primarily the you know the drug war which targeted minority communities it, it did look into it but uh you know who says that even more than me the blm folks the blm folks that supported joe biden joe biden who was pretty pretty for tough on crime pretty pro cop i'd say and then he com because as they say here back in 2009 um <laughs> His history of not making waves against prevailing viewpoints. Guess what? Joe Biden and Cop Mala Harris, who we will also talk about, guess what they ran on? They ran on, you know, defunding the police and, you know, pushing for uh, not taking action against people who were burning down buildings. Some buildings being owned and operated by minorities, but regardless, BLM says it, therefore it, it, it is so. But they ran on this idea that they were going to be tough on cops. They were both cops, <laughs> basically. Or, I mean, Joe Biden wasn't technically a cop. Kamala was. and uh, But he was very much for cops. He was very much... For, okay, hold on, hold on. We've got some clips. We'll play clips, right? We'll play clips. Let me find clips. Yada, 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 yada. These aren't in order. Who, who did this? Who's responsible? You're going to get fired. What the... F shit. Uh, recently closed because I accidentally closed it. Here's one. Damn it. Okay, well. Got a bunch on cop mall here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So this is, uh, fact-checking. Biden's claim the 94 crime bill didn't cause mass incarceration. Uh, we might get into the article. I mostly wanted to play this clip for you because I d did a bunch of digging into these people when I was doing uh, the videos for the Jorgensen campaign because, you know, know your enemy. And your en uh, the, the enemy, which is, you know, proponents of bigger government, proponents of lesser freedom for you and I, proponents of, you know, more government overreaching your lives. I wanted, I wanted to know what they were all about so I could plan a better attack. So I've seen all these things, but it has occurred to me that probably most people haven't. So I'll just share them with you now and let me know if this is the type of speech that is consistent with Joe Biden was pushing when he ran for president in the year of our Lord 2020. Let's listen. We must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents. It doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social, uh, become socialized into the fabric of society. It, do it does not matter like that. The level of care, the level of love that you can hear from this man. Not just this man, anybody in government. I'm not just poking at an old stupid bag of bones, puppet. I mean, this was from 93, so he doesn't look a year over 85 there. 
but uh, he's he's going to be president now. I'm not just poking fun at him, the lovely child-sniffing grandfather that he may be. Uh, all politicians, all politicians that fall into this camp, um, you know, this go with the flow. And if the flow is wrong, we're just going to keep going with the flow because that's what the people want. That is uh, evidence, A, that uh, they're they're not there for you. They're there for them. And we'll just continue. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the Does victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up Corn my pop. wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. He does not want to even ask. He does not want to even hear out the people in society that uh, have gone through struggles in life that brought them to bad points. He does say, and we'll we'll play it, we'll play on, but uh, he does say something to the effect of we need to figure out where the, what the problem is, but he's saying it does not matter really what the problem is. We need to be tough on crime. We need to stop these people, and we need, like, it doesn't matter what background they have, yada, yada, yada. I, I mean, to an extent, obviously, if there's a person murdering somebody, we don't need to be asking them about their, like, taking them to therapy and finding out what their upbringing was. Uh, however, this bill, I'm, I imagine it led to much more incarceration of people smoking weed than it did to incarceration, uh, like, you know, nonviolent offenders, people who never hurt anybody, and people who, in my eyes, never committed a crime. Uh, this is saying, he's saying, pushing for, giving them max sentences. Um, now, it, it, j as you listen on, imagine if this is what he was running on today. N not a mere, oh, what is it, 30 years later, not even. Uh, yeah, this, it's beautiful. Just just imagine, imagine this being played, or him uh, trying out this speech in front of his current audience and his current supporters. That's number one. There's a consensus on that. Unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally it's his white privilege. have not been socialized. They literally have not had an opportunity. So, oh, three more go. minutes. Wedlock, without parents, without supervision. Bashing on people, with, having kids out of wedlock, because that leads to poor and impoverished and destitute criminals, obviously. Uh, let's, it does not matter where they come from. If they're smoking weed, lock them up. We should focus on them now. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. Jeez. That society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Mm -hmm. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my he family is. and yours from them. So he is even saying we created them with our faulty, shitty system. And some could even call that system, in many ways, uh, you know, institutional racism. You know, like the war on drugs that over, over proportionally affected the black and brown communities. But uh, he's saying that uh, it does it. None of that matters. No, we created it, but we need to just shut it down. Again, he's not talking specifically about the war on drugs. But where does this? Like, what do you think he's talking about? Do you think he's talking about people like just people who beat his mother with a lead pipe? Not to mention the fact that <laughs> there's tens of thousands of terrible children who need to be locked up like the amount of fear porn that's going on right here um there are just hordes 
of teenagers in the street who are born into poor, impoverished communities who are stalking down old ladies and beating them with lead pipes. I mean, it was probably even less believable back then than it is today with uh, the riots and looting going on. But uh, just imagine if he was using these tactics today. They are beyond the pale, many of those Beyond people. the pale. Beyond the pale. And it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. And the truth is, we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point. That's the sad truth. I'm the guy that said rehabilitation, when it occurs, we don't understand it and notice it. And when we, even when we notice it and we know it occurs, we don't know why. So you cannot make rehabilitation a condition for release. That's why in our system, there's the federal system, you serve 85% of your time. It's a shame, but we don't know how to rehabilitate. But there is a consensus, and I will cease. A, we must make the streets safer. I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society. I don't care why someone is antisocial. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change their behavior. That's why we do in this bill. We have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it. But they are in jail away from my mother, your husband, our families. But we would, be being, we would be absolutely stupid as a society if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist. And we must deal with that. And how is he dealing with that today? How is he dealing with that today, right? So he's tough on crime, tough on drug crime, and he's tough on he, pushing for maximum sentencing, pushing for wars in Iraq, pushing for, well, you know, going along with wars from uh, uh, Barack Obama. We were on a HuffPost article, weren't we? Let's get back to that one. Oh, that's not the right button. No, that's not the right one either. So, it appears that Biden has largely played the role of a loyal, uh, yep, we said that. He's flip-flopped on everything, is what they're saying. Um, he's not making waves, he's going along, going with the flow, doing what he's told. Being the puppet then, back in 2009, that he is today. Being the, the same guy who supported uh, the extremely tough-on-crime bill, <laughs> is what it should be called, um, and pushing for, you know, tougher sentences, and even if you are rehabilitated, even if you have shown that you can be reintroduced into society, still then, no, because we as the government are too stupid to realize, to understand, I would agree, probably, that the government is too stupid to know the difference between good and bad. No, not probably, definitely, because, you know, the drug war, the racist war on drugs is still going on. But, um, you know, the government should be the ones deciding when you're able to get out, and it shouldn't be when you're rehabilitated, because we don't know. So instead, it'll just be some arbitrary number of years. And let's push for the most of them. Let's push push for as many of them as we can get. Like, that. that's, that's what we're dealing with. Uh, that's the guy who got the BLM endorsement. Uh, for example, he called for a diplomatic engagement with the Iranian government, and unlike Hillary Clinton and some uh, some other Democratic senators, voted against uh, the Kyle Lieb Liebman Amendment, which was widely interpreted uh, as potentially paving the way for the war in Iran. Biden challenged the Republicans' unconstitutional uh, insistence that the executive has the power to wage war without consent of Congress even going as far going so far as to threaten impeachment proceedings against President George W. Bush if he attacked Iran without congressional authorization. He also raised strong objections to some of the Bush administration's efforts to develop new nuclear weapons systems and uh, abrogate existing arms control treaties. He helped lead the fight against Bush's nomination of the far-right John Bolton. Ugh to be U.S. Ambassador of the United Nations. All this stuff, like, they're, they're talking about, they're, they're saying, like, George W., well, he was opposed to George W. Bush because George W. Bush was doing it, therefore he's, he's 
not all bad because he wasn't for all the wars. He wasn't for those Republican wars. He was only for the Democrat wars, right? And that's the same with Republicans. They're, they weren't for those wars that Barack Obama was in, but uh, we've got Trump in here just taking over and leaving things as they are. Uh, how's that helping out? How's that helping you? Um, how is that not... How is it not racist? How is it not racist to vote for people who exist within this system? This system that says that you have to, at the force of gunpoint, have to have your money, your income, the, the what you earned, your property taken from you by a government to take it, put it into the largest military man known to mankind so that we can go destroy people of other minorities and we don't even care. We don't even pay attention. We don't even know that they're happening. That's how little impact it has on our lives because they're somebody else, somewhere else, and I don't care. Let's go back to watching and arguing about uh, whether or not it's uh, it's racist to think that Colin Kaepernick is dumb. That That's the most important thing. Not whether or not people are being genocided by their own like their own people or us like th there are people that you could make the argument that we should be defending uh these other countries but uh you can make a much better argument that if we're going to go and defend another country that uh it's not our job to police the world that it's our job to protect our people that it's our job to protect our citizens which is thoroughly what i believe if there is a military for any reason it is just only to protect us and if we are not being threatened by uh, Syria, Libya, uh, you name it, Yemen, uh, doesn't matter, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, all these places, it, unless we are directly under attack. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Why is it our problem? Why is it our business? And I know that can sound cold-hearted, like we should be defending other people. Again, I could, I could concede the argument that there are some circumstances, uh, where I, I would say that maybe, maybe it is our place to go and defend um, our allies who are under attack directly, but that's not what we're talking about anymore, guys. And we Gulf of Tonkin, look into it, do some research. 9-11, for fuck's sake, do some research. If you think that all just happened because of happenstance, uh, I mean, even if you want to believe the official story of 9-11, how much does that still today play into the fact that we are still in Afghanistan? If you believe everything that they said, why are we still there? I don't know. If you have no problem with people, with the system, just decimating lives that don't don't need their protection, that aren't even, like, we're killing people that aren't even threats, people that aren't even under attack. We're killing people that, like, we are the problem. We are the attack. We They are under attack because we're bombing them. Huh. Like, <laughs> if we could see, lay it out on a map, the amount of lives that the United States has consumed over the the years. Like, but we're going to focus on whether or not Gina Carano used her, you know, what is it? Her pronouns in her Twitter bio. I don't even know what that means. You can accidentally be a bigot these days just by not using Twitter properly. That's the level of intelligence that we're, we're currently, uh, you know, currently batting against. And like I said, I'm working toward, I want to push for 2021 to be the year of no fear, the year of fearlessness, the year of seeking truth without having to baby toe step through the, the minefields and hope that somebody doesn't take offense to it. There is truth, guys. There, there's truth, and I want to find it, and that's the point of this show. We're here to talk about uh, all the uncomfortable topics to seek out truth so that the fabric of our society, of our humanity, is better. That's all, That's the main thing I want, is for this to be better. For our existence, while we're here on this, uh, this plane of existence, flat plane, just kidding, or am I? Who knows? Um... <laughs> I, I want us all to be able to have conversations about real life, about real important matters. And we're getting to the point where some of this, uh, the, the cancel culture and the woke crap, all that stuff, that's like, 
it's not just it's not about protecting people's feelings anymore as ridiculous as that might be uh because people are adults and should be able to handle hard words but it's not it's becoming it's getting to the point where it's not about that it's about this massive distraction and making people outraged dividing people fo making forcing them to focus all of their efforts on tearing each other down, on dividing the country, on dividing humanity. I'm not just talking United States of America bullshit. I don't care. I'm talking humanity in general. If you are a libertarian especially, you need to realize that there is zero hope for the future within the system as it currently stands. We are watching an election play out where it's obvious that there's some fraud. It's obvious that everything was not on the up and up it's obvious that joe biden stole it from bernie sanders ha didn't see that one coming did you uh joe biden definitely stole it from bernie sanders bernie sanders was screwed over twice and they're going to claim that there's no uh you know there's no possibility of, of election meddling when we know for a fact that bernie sanders got screwed over at least once probably most likely twice you people that are that were bernie bros going along with biden or even supporting Bernie after he went along with Hillary Clinton, after he got flagrantly screwed over, and then he just, you know, bends over and takes it from Hillary Clinton. And you're you're still supporting that weak of a human? <laughs> like, that's your revolutionary? Oh, and then four years later, he did it again. He just, just went with it, because he's a career politician too. He speaks your language, but... Uh, you you voted for Biden. There's probably a lot of you that voted for Biden because Bernie Sanders told you to. It, now look at Joe Biden, war hawk, being called a war hawk by here, 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 here. Biden's hawkish record. Who is this? Is it Fox News? No, it's Huffington Post. Like, <laughs> this is not new. They're gonna stop reporting on it because they don't want to talk about it anymore. But uh, Joe Biden likes blowing up brown people. <laughs> Joe Biden has no problem with it. Joe Biden may be directly responsible for the death of his son. Not only that, Joe Biden has lied about it so many times. And Joe Biden loves mass incarceration. Joe Biden loves the death penalty. Joe Biden, uh... This is too long of a text for me to read on air. What else? Joe, Joe Biden. Uh, Joe Biden said things like, I don't want my kids growing up in a racial jungle. That was in reference to busing children into schools because it would, you know, make too much of a racial jungle. You know, it would incorporate the minorities and with people like Joe Biden and his kids too heavily for him to be comfortable in that kind of a setting. That's a thing. That's a thing that he said. Don't take my word for it. I'm just some stupid white guy, some white supremacist. A person, a from earlier story yeah uh you, okay so d don't take my word for it let's who would be the best who would be the best here to comment on joe biden's seedy some would say racist track record damn it if any of my stuff is in the right order today i would be stoked hang in there Good lord. Okay, I can't find it. Oh, I'll find it. So, hmm. <laughs> no, I gotta find it. I gotta find it, guys. I'm just gonna pull it up, pull up a sample on the YouTubes. And uh, here we go. This should be what I'm looking for. Let me share this with you. It was actually very, Again, it was don't take my word for it. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth, Kamala Harris. Hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. 
First off, bullshit. <laughs> I mean, the, the, just the way she spins it into, oh, poor her thing. No, probably not. But regardless, the thing that she's pointing out stands. And now she is, uh, you know, suckling that, that teat herself right along next to the guy who she... They say that she didn't call him a racist. And her response to this is... Oh, it was a debate. It was just a debate. Ha 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 ha. What does that tell you when when she says it's just a debate? That tells you she's full of shit. That she'll do whatever it takes. That she's a career politician too and she wants to, she wants to get the same spot that he's shooting for. And when he's looking like he's going to get the spot, she's going to use that in in her defense against him and sneakily call him a racist without completely without outright calling him a racist because she knows that there might be a vice presidential seat waiting for her at the end of that uh, tiptoe around the racism rainbow that she's playing. It's just a, a debate, right? So you're lying? You're lying on it for a national debate. That's what we're dealing with. So you're lying about this guy who's provenly a liar um, on a on a debate stage. Okay. We're going to skip over his. He just, he literally says... Uh, no, I, I didn't. Uh-uh. Here, I'll show you. I my position across the board. I did not praise racist. That is not true. Number one. Number two, if we want to have He's this so campaign litigated on who supports civil rights and whether I did or not, I'm happy to do that. I was a public defender. I didn't become a prosecutor. I came a defender. Yeah. Number two, as the U.S. attorney, we oh, worked very so doesn't hard have to a response. I thought they got into it more. Uh, you want to know why? No, 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 no ads. Nope, you don't get it. Nope. All right. So, yeah, she goes on to laugh about it and say it was just a debate. And it's like, well, then you're a liar. Uh, so there's that. If that's if that's not enough, um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, we'll move on to Kamala. Because now they're a done deal. They're a two, two-person two matchup. They are the most diverse cast in history since Barack Obama and uh, who? Joe Biden. The the two people that kept us in wars and got us in war. Um because of their racial diversity, it's okay though. Um, now we've got this new, new edgy, racially diverse pair of a, of a cop and a guy who loves cops, who supports being tough on crime, pushing for again, pushing for death penalties. Uh, there is a clip you can find it, same like Senate hearing I believe, where he's talking about the crime bill, and uh, I, I used it in one of the Jorgensen ads, but he says something to the effect of, um, people say that. Um, Shit, what was it? That there isn't. Uh, oh, I, I've. I Biden would impose the death penalty on everything, but jaywalking or something like that. Uh, all the way up to jaywalking. Like Biden loves the death penalty. Biden's all about the death penalty. And if you're a Republican coming here to hear what I have to say, because you think that I'm just, you know, uh, you think that I'm that, that I'm with you. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I am. I I support. Uh, everyone finding truth and seeking truth. I we invite people from all backgrounds, but just know that I'm not not a Republican either. Um, I I think that the, the death penalty is bullshit. And I got in this conversation. It was a it was a nice conversation with uh, some family members recently. They said something like, um, like a hardcore Republican uh, family member said something to the effect of, "Oh, I, the death penalty. I'm not one of those liberal pussies or something like that." And I was like, well, I don't support the death penalty. And he was like, really? <laughs> like, I don't even understand how a Republican could even be surprised that somebody would oppose the death penalty. I don't understand why Republicans are the ones that endorse the death penalty. And they pretend to be for smaller government. But they, the obvious big issue with the death penalty is, do you trust your government's decision-making skills? No. <laughs> Then why do you trust them to not not kill people on purpose? Like they're they're doing it overseas. What makes you think they're not doing it here? Of course they're doing it here. Why would you give them that power? Even if, like, of course it's easy to say. It's easy to, you know, say if if somebody killed my daughter or somebody did something to a family member or something in front of me, I yeah I'd defend myself or I'd defend them and murder that person where they stood. I would shoot them in the face immediately without hesitation of course because i'm not a pacifist i i am but i don't think that it's the government's place to determine that because the government has a really bad track record of killing innocent people on purpose much of the time 
I'm looking at you, Kamala. Um, and Biden and Trump and all of them. Oh God. Um, I, I like if you're a Republican, you need to drop that that thought process that the government is bad uh, when it comes to like the government shouldn't be telling us how to speak and live our lives and how we should have guns. They should just be telling us who is allowed to live and who isn't. Like they're they're wrong much of the time. Many innocent people have been killed by our government because the death penalty exists. They no man should have the power. Who was it like? They weren't there. They didn't witness it. That's what I'm saying. It's not defense at that point. You're not defending yourself if the guy's locked up, right? And I'm not saying that I wouldn't have a crime of passion, even if I wasn't there when it happened, and I saw the person later on. Can't say there wouldn't be a, you know, temporary insanity lapse and a crime of passion circumstance on our hands there, but the government does not care about you. The government is not killing people to protect you. The government is, you know, just doing what is in their best interest, always, because your government doesn't love you. So stop, if you don't trust the government on one thing, why are you trusting them on anything? Stop giving them that authority and that power. You are the power. Take it back. All right. Uh, so speaking of, you know, bad on crime, speaking of Kamala Harris, who is calling out Joe Biden for his racist tendencies in his past, and she laughs it off. Let's talk about the, the lady herself, the first woman of color in our White House she will be. Isn't it sad, though, that the first female president will not be elected? Anybody else have a problem with that? We're finally going to get a female president, and she's only going to be there because... She was given it by an old white dude. <laughs> Accept it. Uh, and if you're listening to this in the in the future, of course, all of this, the, all of these are jokes. Praise Kamala. Praise be. Hail Kamala. Everything else, whatever is required of us to say at this point. Um, yeah, of course, I I drop the whole shtick of being for freedom as, as soon as Kamala becomes president, because we're all screwed. <laughs> A kid. Kinda. Do I? I don't know. So Kamala attacked Biden and all that. Now let's hear from somebody else. Let's hear from somebody talking about Kamala's history. And this is from the side that espouses anti-racism. Tulsi Gabbard. What, what does she have to say about Kamala? You took issue with Senator Harris confronting Vice President Biden at the last debate. You called it a quote false accusation that Joe Biden is a racist. What's your response? I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She Let's talk about that. We got to pause on some of these and we'll break them each down. She did. She, uh, she as the district attorney, she put over 1,500 uh, nonviolent, quote unquote, criminals in jail for drug offenses. That means smoking weed. She put 1,500 in jail and then she went on the Breakfast Club. Let's see if I can find that clip. Damn it. One second. Uh, she went on the breakfast club to say, uh, to, you know, just just talk about all, all the stuff. Breakfast club is like a hip hop based morning show, radio show, whatever. But uh, here's what she had to say there about marijuana after putting 1500 people in jail, probably largely minorities, statistically, uh, for smoking marijuana. Living weed. That's not true. I know. <laughs> and, and, and look, I joke about it, half joking. Half my family's from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Pause. Pull up this. Kamala Harris's Jamaican father wasn't mu amused by her joke about marijuana use. There's a nice side tangent. When White House hopeful Kamala Harris acknowledged using marijuana in her in her youth during a radio interview last week, she jokingly said, half my family is from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? Uh, among those who weren't amused, her Jamaican father, Donald J. Harris, sent a statement to Jamaica Global Online seeking to categorically disassociate himself from the remarks of his daughter, a Democratic senator from California, 
who announced her presidential bid last month and also announced that she's going to say whatever, say or do whatever she can say or do to get people to be, make her, you know, the vice president of the United States. And uh, this is what Kamala Harris was talking about. Gosh, dang it. All right. Back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so mad but at you. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I and I inhale. I didn't. I did inhale. It was. It's funny that she says that. Like that's a joke that she's making because her party, in every party, and everyone who's been probably elected president, except for maybe Donald Trump. He seems too uptight. But pretty much everybody, I would imagine, has smoked weed, and they've always denied it up until now because it's been a very unpopular position to take. But now we can be honest about it. We can be honest. Uh, that we are puppets and we will go with the flow. She will, just like Joe Biden, she will lock people up for this very thing that she has uh, done herself and made racist comments about how Jamaicans are, uh, you know, all potheads is what it sounds like that pissed her dad off. Yeah. Long time ago. <laughs> but, now, yes. I know you have to go. They say you have to go. I just, wanted to I just broke news. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was it in college? Or... Uh-huh. See, see, I like stuff like that. That's a real <laughs> honest answer. Yeah. Was it a uh-huh. blunder joint? It was a joint. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you remember the high? I do. It was a joint. It was a, like she's she's still playing it safe. Like she only did it once, but she's saying she straight up said that. Of course she has because her family is a bunch of pothead Jamaicans. Her words, not mine. Um, <laughs> but she's pretending like it was a joint. The one time I did it, which is the the pandering. It's almost as bad as Hillary Clinton's hot sauce. So if it was legalized all throughout the country and <laughs> yeah. medicinal, would you, you know, do it? Listen, again? I think that it gives a lot of people joy, and we need more <laughs> joy. We <laughs> need more joy in this world. <laughs> also, and I know the answer to this too. Oh, that's that's it for that one. Um. So yeah, she she. Gosh, dang it! I always push that button before pressing back over. Okay. Uh. So yeah, she straight laughed about a thing that she uh, incarcerated a bunch of people for. Hypocrisy, I, uh, thy name is Kamala Harris. Oh, and she did inhale because she's super edgy, super, super edgy. To that I say, screw you, Kamala Harris. All right, let's let's play some more Tulsi Gabbard. Wait, nope, not there. Good lord. And then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept... Like, can you just linger on that for a bit, Tulsi? That's pretty substantial. She blocked evidence from uh, a man on death... She blocked evidence that would take a man off death row. Black man, mind you. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know if there's race involved or not, but... Ooh, that's not a great look. Uh, like, just if this happens today, it would obviously be a... The case would be 100% based on race. If there's a black man on death row and we have a uh, district attorney who's blocking evidence to get him off death row. And it was something to the effect of, I don't I don't know if I have a, an article pulled up, but it was something to the effect of, we'll, pr- we'll probably talk about it. But it was like, this guy was on death row, they had some new evidence, and uh, she wouldn't let them submit it. Or they finally got them to. They finally got her to let them submit it, and then they were right past their deadline, their time, their arbitrary time limit that they were supposed to have it in. But they had this evidence to clear his name, and she still tried blocking it from being submitted to evidence because, uh, her words, it would set a bad precedent. It would set a bad precedent for her to allow evidence proving a man's innocence to keep him from being murdered by the government. An innocent man, guys. Like, that's why we can't... That's why I'm against the death penalty. Because shit like this. She did it for political gain. She was willing... Like, because he doesn't matter at all to her. Black man, mind you. Uh, Not important, obviously. According to Kamala. Um, Come on. Come on. People in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. Now... She kept people in prison past their sentence time to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. That is called 
slavery. <laughs> like, the, the level of mental gymnastics that you have to do to think that a vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is a vote for anti-racism because they are the Democratic candidates. It's the so freaking dishonest. It's disgusting. And why is it racist? Well, for the same reason Black Lives Matter, the things that Black Lives Matter are correct on, that there is an over-incarceration of minorities. There is, because they seem to like weed a lot, and then they get in trouble for it a lot, and they grow up in these, uh, oftentimes these, like, uh, you know, what's the word? Urban territories and things that are uh, slums, often. I, it, it happens. I, I'm speaking in favor of lifting these people out, out of poverty and helping them, not locking them up like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris would. The idea that the person who put six, uh, almost 1,600 people in prison for smoking weed when she laughs about herself smoking weed, just like Barack Obama did, he laughed about it and said, yeah, I've smoked weed. <laughs> it's like, then, especially Barack Obama, you had the ability to legalize weed you are you are intent you are allowing this monstrosity to go on with the drug war you're saying yes we need to lock up people for the crime that i have committed and i am the president of the united states and i can stop this right now the it just hurts it hurts it hurts to think about and she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. As the elected Attorney General of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches not or be in a- Fancy speeches. She called that a fancy speech. She's not even responding to anything that Tulsi Gabbard said. And we don't need to spend too much time on this because, again, this is not news. This is from long, long ago, at the beginning of the year. Um, but, uh, yeah. The fact that, okay, she she also pushed for, what was it, um, the truancy bill. She said that her people under her, th like, were appalled at the idea of her truancy bill that she proposed, and she laughed about how, how funny. She thought that was, that her administration or the her sycophants thought that it was frightening. <laughs> <laughs> truancy bill that means your child skips school parents get arrested literally that's what it means child skips school parents get arrested and she laughed that people thought that that was horrifying that's horrifying <laughs> good god so we've got a war hawk cop lover and a cop again the, my main point is Where's the line for, for racism here? Is the line at jokes? Is the line at poking fun at people? Is the line... And by that, I mean inclusion. Inclusion. I If I was hanging out with a black guy, I would love for him to feel comfortable making jokes about white people. Absolutely, I would. And I would hope the same. That is like inclusion. That is love. That is unity. When we can poke fun at each other and uh, rag on each other and give each other a hard time. That is brotherhood. That is lovely. And that is... I mean, there are outliers, of course. There are racists in the world. There are people... Like, there's a fine line between what is a joke joke and what is... Hey, buddy. Hey, did... Wait, did you mean that? <laughs> I don't know, but neither one of those things should be illegal. They, they should all be freedom of speech, freedom of expression. You have the right to be an idiot. You have the right to be a racist. Doesn't make you a good person for doing it. But if we're going to talk about what is more racist, what is more racism, what is worse? How can you vote for these people? And Donald Trump had his chance. He had his chance to bring them home. He did not. He made it very clear that he's not that interested in ending the war on drugs, which is racist. 
or ending, you know, bombing brown people, which I would say is pretty racist. Because what is racism? Racism is thinking that somebody of a different skin color is of lesser value than you. If you don't care about, or if you care more about 20 people being bombed by your government in a white suburban household in uh, California, if you care more about that than thousands and thousands of thousands of minorities, quote unquote, being genocided all across the world because we have to be the world police, if you haven't even thought about that or you haven't you know, looked into what exactly your tax dollars go for, go toward. Stop. Stop pretending. Stop pretending to care. Stop pretending like you're doing something because you're not. Just love the people around you and try to stop other people from getting hurt in real life, not on Twitter. D write your congressman. Tell them, stop. And stop voting for these dumbass fucking war hawks. Every single one of them. Trump included. Don't vote for people that you don't... These... These monkeys in the White House, Donald Trump and Joe Biden, both of them, they are... It's... How, how did we get here, you guys? How did we get to the point where I'm having to have this conversation with myself? Where I'm having to... Uh, convince people that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a racist for having said jokes, for, for respecting black folk enough to feel like I can poke fun at them as I would hope that they do with me. How is that what we're concerned about? How, where does this go, guys? If you don't care about people around the world, if, the, if their life matters less to you, then where do you get off calling anybody a racist? If you vote for somebody who has no problem killing people of all colors, shapes, and sizes. I think it was Scott Horton tweet or something. He said something to the effect of, if there was a, a a trans woman in like if I said that there was three thousand people in Yemen being genocided and one of them was trans, would you care about it more? Like, what really matters here, guys? We're 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 pretending like Gina Carano's Twitter handle is a value and worth spending our precious breath on, and our time on more than lives. Lives everywhere. And even at home. Let's talk about at home. Let's talk about the foster care system. I, I work in it. I work in it for free because I love taking care of those kids. And a lot of those kids are minorities. Okay? What are you doing? You on Twitter who would call me a racist. What are you doing exactly? Defending defi def like, like the minorities need you. Like they need you to defend them. Like they got... I, I can't I can't go there I can't go there guys I just we need to take a step back we need to you know regroup for 2021 and we need to really prioritize and take a good hard look at ourselves and what actually matters here yes don't be a racist obviously because that's retarded <laughs> but You can't use it. You can't use it so loosely. All right? You got to give me a little bit of evidence. You can't go out and vote for Joe Biden and call me a racist for a joke. Got it? All right. So, what else have we got here? Uh, da 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 da. Uh, inside Kamala Harris's polarizing record as a prosecutor from the New York Post. This is not news. Everybody knows they're shitty people. Uh, fact check. Did Biden support wars in Iraq? Serbia, Syria, and Libya. Let's read a little bit of that one, shall we? Republican Senator Rand Paul advocates for President Donald Trump's re-election by portraying him as someone who wants to end wars and casting Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden as someone who consistently called for more war. Absolutely. And how much did Donald Trump actually do as well? 
like I said earlier, Rand, you had your chance. I like you sometimes, but the, your 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 defense of Trump on this matter specifically, it's like, what the hell were you thinking? What were you doing for four years? Why would I believe you next time? Uh, Joe Biden voted for the Iraq War, which President Trump has long called the worst uh, geopolitical mistake of our generation. So, okay. How about Afghanistan? How about Yemen? Uh, Paul said... Uh, August 25th, during the second night of the Republican National Convention, I fear Biden will choose a choose war again. He supported the war in uh, Serbia, Syria, and Libya. Is Senator from Kentucky right about Biden's record? Biden voted for a solution to pay that paved the way for the Iraq War and for non-binding resolution to authorize military air operations against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, Serbia. Uh, that's Serbia and uh, Montenegro. The conflicts in Syria and Libya happened uh, when Biden was vice president and followed the pl the policies of President Barack Obama. Biden voted for the war in Iraq. This checks out. So we can, we can just read the headlines here. Biden voted for the war in Iraq. Yes, he did. Let's see how much of Rand Paul's statement were incorrect, actually. Uh, Biden supported war in Serbia, Syria, and Libya. Biden voted for a 1999 concurrent resolution authorizing President Bill Clinton to conduct military air operations and missile strikes against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, Serbia, Montenegro, in cooperation with um, North Atlantic Treaty Organization allies. Uh, concurrent resolutions express the sentiments of Congress by, but are not signed by the President and do not carry the force of law. Clinton, in March 1999, ordered airstrikes in response to Yugoslavia's campaign of violence against the ethnic Albanians in the province of Kosovo. Yes. Uh, Syria. Syrians begin uh, protesting their government in early... Blah, 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 blah. Just give me a yes or no. Biden's campaign said the Obama administration supported the Syrian opposition in a variety of ways, including by deploying U.S. forces, forces to combat ISIS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, the United States... And part of NATO operation provided air support in intervention that resoluted, or resulted in uh, ouster, out, out, ouster, uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Politifact ruling. Uh, Paul said Biden voted for the Iraqi war. He supported war in Syria, Libya, uh, Syria, Syria, and Libya. Biden, as senator, voted for resolutions that supported interventions in Iraq and Yugoslavia. As vice president, he followed the policies of the Obama administration, which included interventions in Syria and Libya. So yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Biden's campaign said that Biden, as vice president, supported going into Syria, but pointed to 2016 reporting that said uh, Biden, within the White House, argued against intervention in Libya. Paul's claim is accurate, but needs clarification or additional information. We rate it mostly true, and this is clearly from somebody who wants to rate it mostly false and can't seem to bring themselves to do so because they know it is completely true. <laughs> uh, yep. From another website, Joe Biden again lies about his son dying in Iraq war, this time to 90-year-old who lost her son on 9-11. How sad. How did Joe Biden's son, Bo, die? Here's how, blah, 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 served in Iraq. Joe Biden killed his own son. Kamala Harris's abysmal record. We, You get it. I think you get it. We're an hour and a half in. I think you understand the point I'm trying to make. I hope you do, because it feels like rambly nonsense to me. If you understood what I'm getting at, please feel free to write me at dan at tsidpod.com and that'll go straight to me and I'll read it and I might read it on here and I'll get back to you or I won't read it on here. doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you disagree with what, I, uh, what I'm what i saying here, do write me and let me know because I, I think that we're going in a weird direction, guys. I think as, as it stands in 2020, as we wrap up this ridiculous year, not a bad year overall. A lot of good, a lot of good, a couple bad things, you know, but mostly good. Um, as we wrap up this year, we need to be thinking forward on these things, on what truly matters in our lives. And I don't think it's the system. If I was, if I hadn't been clear enough 
to that point. I don't think it is the system that we're currently, you know, dying in. Where we have to decide between douchebag Trump to divide us, or we get to decide from Kamala, Kapmala, and, uh, you know, Joe Biden's corpse. The, these people who have directly implemented policies and actions that have hurt minorities, that have hurt humans all around the world. And we're, we're supposed to choose from that? If you're voting for that, that in, in some sense is racist, right? If you're saying that other lives don't matter around the world, that is racist because they're not here. That, 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 just do some research before you start using the word, guys. That's all I'm saying. Uh, th I think that's going to be it for today. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've had a great year here. And I have big plans for uh, the very soon coming future. I'm knocking out that wall, as I said before. Uh, you guys are helping support that over in the Downers Club. Let me see if I've got that here. The Downers Club. Right there. Um, yeah. I'm knocking out the wall behind me. We're planning on uh, restructuring and building out this studio to be something even cooler than the junk drawer that is it, that it is right here. But uh, please consider supporting at patreon.com forward slash the system is down and we will move upward and onward into a more truthful, more honest and more bravely, you know, fearless future of seeking to become a unified humanity together. That is what we are about here. We are about unity and sometimes unity can be offensive but words don't hurt nearly as much as bombs. And I'll leave you with that, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, tune in next time. I don't know what it's going to happen, but it's probably going to be a bunch more rambling. Until then, question everything, stand comfortable, and where's my outro? I'll talk to you then. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe on your way out and help us change the world one uncomfortable conversation at a time. And if you like what you hear and you want to hear more, Go join the Downers Club at patreon.com forward slash the systems down for bonus episodes of the show every single week. Until next time, please continue to question everything, stand comfortable, and I'll talk to you then. Thanks. This has been a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net. This concludes our broadcast day. Click.